Good morning and welcome to worship today. Today is a great day to worship and serve God. Today we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. We invite you to prepare your hearts and minds to receive that sacrament, which is Jesus becoming a part of you and a part of your lives and inviting you to experience his presence in your life through the gift of forgiveness and reconciliation with God and with one another. A few announcements to highlight for today. Um, there are several spots left uh, open for altar flower sign-up, and um, we'd like to thank those who um, have been uh, donating flowers uh, for today. Um, today, the flowers are given in, by the Simpson family in honor and memory of Harold Simpson III on his birthday, September 1st, uh, September 21st. September 21st has become a a kind of a tradition here in the school. It's a day when we think about and thank God for those who are close to us and um, remember those who have passed on. And it's become also a day of, um, and a week of, of thinking about ways to do random acts of kindness uh, for one another. So that's kind of an interesting and neat emphasis in our school. The Rebecca Circle meets uh, in the library today at 11.30. Um, let's see, we have a fundraiser coming up uh, this coming Tuesday at um, Truxton's, 15% uh, donated to the school. So um, there's a flyer available if you contact the school office, and uh, I think there's a digital version, version of it as well, uh, but um, just share that with them as, as you uh, eat at Truxton. Another excuse to go out and eat, yay. Um, we're starting a new Bible study, uh, Back to the Bible program, starting officially on October 8th. It's going to be a through the Bible kind of a, a thing, a chronological look at the events of Scripture. We're starting October 18th because that's when it uh, shifts into the New Testament mode, and we thought that would be a good place to start. Um, but the Bibles are available. They're a little over $20 or so, hardcover and softcover are available, softcover is a little less. Uh, talk to Laura Downey uh, after church, she has some samples there and uh, I think she could arrange to sell you one or two or ten. I think we only have 12 today, but she's, she's available there and uh, can answer any questions about that. There should be some information in the bulletin about that as well. Uh, the Youth Commission is active again and uh, wanting to plan activities, and they've invited, <coughs> they're inviting people to a movie night um, on Friday, October 8th, 6.45 p.m. out on the lawn. We'll have a projector set up and a giant screen and a uh, sound system, and the movie that they wanted to see is uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. So uh, not, not spooky and kind of funny and cute and very strange. So kind of fits with Halloween. Um, our uh, day school is open. We're gaining a few students every week, which is interesting to see and much appreciated. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the Early Learning Center is um, getting ever closer to being ready to open. Seems like we've been saying that for years now, um, but uh, we're getting licensing sorted out. Our Final installations are happening with our outdoor equipment. The fire department is getting ready to come, I think, and do an inspection. So we're, we're very much looking forward to that. So if you know anybody that is in need of childcare or um, is looking for a good school that, that would um, share conservative Christian values and, and a great education, please let us know. I think that's the extent of our Announcements will invite our cathedral choir to lead us in a call to worship. Hallelujah. 
opening hymn for this morning. All are welcome. Please stand as we sing. service of worship and praise in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given a son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Join with me, please, in the prayer of the day. Lord God, you call us to work in your vineyard and leave no one standing idle. Set us to our tasks in the world of your kingdom and help us to order our lives by your wisdom through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
The texts for the Sundays after Pentecost are chosen to deepen our walk of faith in Christ. The te texts for this Sunday help us find direction and purpose in life. Our first lesson, taken from the writings of the prophet Jeremiah, is written to anyone who is suffering unjustly as they try to serve God. We are reminded that it is ultimately God who judges and will bring re retribution on the unjust. The first lesson is from the 11th chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruits, let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Here ends the lesson. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 54, a psalm crying out to the God of rescue. The Lord upholds my life. In our second lesson, the Apostle James helps us to see that praying for things for ourselves doesn't bring happiness and ultimately doesn't even bring the things that we want for ourselves either. The second lesson is from the third and fourth chapters of the book of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and you do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. 
You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Here ends the lesson. Please rise for the singing of the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days later, after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? They were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. Taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. Kids, come on down front for a children's message. We have a few kids here, I think. Good morning, kids. I brought a prop today. It's always fun for me to bring props. This is a measuring tape. I've been using them a lot around here, building stuff and rebuilding stuff and fixing things and figuring out where to put things. Measuring is kind of the theme for today's gospel text, too, and maybe the other texts as well. There are different ways to measure a person. Kira, why don't you stand up here? Let's see how we can measure how tall you are. You're about 63 inches or so, a little over five foot. Now, can we measure how big a person you are inside? Not without making a big mess. Outside, it's, it's easy, but inside, not so much. I mean, we can measure how big your head is around. This isn't quite the kind, right kind of measuring tape to do that. But the gospel is talking about a measurement on the inside, the kind of person you are. And one of the things that is so important about being a Christian and being the kind of person that follows Jesus is a sense of humility, a sense of being able to lift up people who are weaker or in need, a sense of putting yourself last and serving other people. That's a part of being a Christian but what about me? Who's going to take care of me? And that's the faith part. That's the exciting part. God is the one who takes care of you. 
So as we live our lives of trust and faith in God, we know that we can serve other people and put them first because God is putting us as, as his children and he's caring for us. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for caring for us. Help us to trust you and put others first and learn to serve others with all our hearts, with joy and thanksgiving, because you are our Lord, our God. In Jesus' name, amen. May I head back to your pews. Thanks for coming up. And this is going to bug me the whole time, so I'm going to try and straighten it out a little bit. Is that better? It's worse. <laughs> well, that'll do for now. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I ran across a cute story I hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, gentleman was teaching Sunday school and trying to teach kids about what it means to be a Christian and a follower of Jesus and how he could, they could get into heaven, what that, how, what that would entail. So he asked some questions. If I sold my house and my car, had a big garage sale and gave all my money to the church, would that get me into heaven? He asked the children this in the Sunday school class. No, they all answered. If I cleaned the church every day, mowed the yard, and kept everything neat and tidy, would that get me into heaven? Again, the answer was no. Well then, if I was kind to animals and gave candy to all the children in the world and loved my family, would that get me into heaven? Again, the answer, no. Well, then how would I get into heaven? Five-year-old boy uh, piped up, you have to die first. That is correct, but there's other things going on there too, of course. Being willing to die to oneself and to put others first is a part of the call of the Christian. It is a part of what it means to be a true follower of Christ. Often when people make their way in the world, they think they've got to be forceful, they've got to dominate, they've got to demand recognition, otherwise people won't notice them. What a small way of living. Often people like that do get ahead, but at what cost? They destroy their relationships, they damage everything that they touch, they make a mess constantly because of their need to be first. And that's the antithesis of what it means to be a Christian. That flips everything on its head. It's a very strange thing to see people try to get ahead in the church living that, that way and treating other people that way. Living as a servant of Christ and of one another, that is kind of the key. A great quote that I like, I come back to every once in a while from C.S. Lewis. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it is thinking of yourself less. That concept is really at the heart of what makes sense as a Christian. We don't constantly try to figure out how do we take care of ourselves because if we trust God and are living in a life that is dependent on the love and the life and the care of God, even when things are difficult or bad, even when we mess up, even when things just go horribly wrong, God is in those dark, painful, scary moments. And if we're trusting God in those dark and scary, painful moments, that's very often where God can do the most amazing things. If we're trusting God when things are difficult and we're open to God's guidance and care, God is then free to do things. But if we're constantly scrambling and trying to be in control and trying to dominate and make excuses and defend ourselves or blame other people for problems or go through life with an entitlement attitude, 
God is kind of pushed out of the picture. Coming at life with humility and a sense of trust in God is a great way to go. One of the things we're doing with our uh, kids here, we continue the process of looking at the seven habits of happy kids based on Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. And one of the quotes from from him in his uh, seven habits book is this, humility is the mother of all virtues. Humility says we're not in control principles or God is in control. Therefore, we submit ourselves to them. Pride says we're in control since our values govern our behavior. We can simply do life our way. If we're going through life proud and angry and afraid and pushing back constantly on other people, demanding that they pay attention to us, wanting to make sure that others know how great we are, that's a small-minded way of living, and it really does exclude God. The virtues that Covey is talking about and the principles that he's talking about, we gain from Scripture. This concept of loving others, of being a servant of others, these are for us the principles of life. His Seven Habits book isn't a particularly religious book, though every once in a while he'll quote Scripture um, and quote Jesus more from a generic point of view. But it's a very sound book when you look at what does it mean to put the principles that we base our life on first. If we're reactive, if we're angry, if we strike out at other people, if we're constantly building a wall around ourselves to protect ourselves, we're also keeping God out of the equation. And that is not good. It doesn't allow us to enter in either into the stories of people whose lives really need to see Jesus' presence. This is always the way God has treated his people. He has always wanted his people to care for others, to be aware of their presence in the world and to make sure that we realize that we have been blessed to be a blessing to those who are in need. From Micah 6, 8, what does the Lord require of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That sums it up, and it has always summed up what God expects and hopes for his people. The problem, of course, is that we're so often unable to do that. We act in selfishness or fear, and then we sin. We think that we're not going to get enough, and so we take what others have. We think that we're, our relationships aren't good enough and so we damage others or go out of our way to make a mess in our own relationships, thinking that we know better how to do things. It all begins with this sense of humility, of service to others, of putting others before ourselves and realizing that we are walking in God's presence. What a great way to live. Jesus caught out his disciples. They were trying to figure out who was going to be in charge in heaven and in the kingdom as it unfolded on earth. They did not want to hear about Jesus' ultimate sacrifice. They did not want to hear about what it meant to really be a person of God. And as we've said before, the disciples were trying to talk Jesus out of what he knew was coming, what he knew had to happen. Sometimes we get ourselves in a position where it's going to be difficult and we know that we're walking a road of service that is going to be costly and may not turn out as we hoped it would. That's where trust in God really comes into play. That's where we expend ourselves freely no matter what. I've been in situations where I know that if I do what I'm supposed to do and have to do, it's going to get hard and weird, and sometimes you just have no choice. Sometimes you just go down that road knowing that it's going to be a tough road, and that's okay. Because in that part of your journey, 
you're going to find God's presence there. You're going to find signs of God's love and healing as you learn to trust God in all things. So the measure of a person, of the greatness of a person, really has to do with not their accomplishments or how strong they are, how much money they have, or what positions they've managed to wrangle in life. It has to do with how great a servant they are, how much they are able and willing to open up to the needs and hurts of others. It's a vulnerability. It's a desire to put others first. It's a willingness to be put into those difficult situations that are just impossible. To walk with others in their journey in their need, no matter what the cost to you. This is the Christian life. This is service. And the deeper you go into that, the more you find that it is a genuine act of faith, living out a life of service to others. It's not about respect. It's not about demanding that people pay attention to who you are and what you're entitled to. In fact, those things are completely the antithesis of faith. It is a trust in God. It is knowing that God cares for us. And that is where the greatness of faith comes into play. A complete willingness, something that we likely in this life will never fully achieve, but a willingness to serve others at great cost to ourselves. It's a direction, it's a journey, it's something we learn, we make mistakes and we grow in these things, but we find God's presence in that journey in a quest for greatness and power, God is not there. In fact, you may find yourself opposing those that God loves and cares for. That's a whole different sermon, and it's a different and painful way to live. Let's pray. Gracious God, we want to serve you with all our hearts and minds. We want to grow closer to you. We want to live a life of forgiveness and of healing. We make mistakes and we know that. And we thank you for this gift of forgiveness that doesn't just allow us to go on with life, it allows us to go deeper into faith. Bless us, your people, through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn of the day, Rise Up, O Saints of God. And I always make people stand when we sing this because it says to rise up. So rise up, saints. Let's sing. together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Gracious God, so many of the issues and problems that we go through as Christians, that we go through as a church, come down to an unwillingness to serve, a demand for recognition, a demand for a sense of entitlement being played out in our lives, a demand for things being done our way. Help us to trust you and to serve one another, to focus on your word, on the scriptures and what they call us to do and to be, and to trust you to care for us as we sort out who we are and how we make our way in the world. Make us ever aware, ever mindful of those who are in need around us. Give us a sense of how we might help and care for them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our troubled world, damaged by pandemic, damaged by divisions, damaged by racial strife, damaged by inequities and injustices, damaged by the history of all of these things combining, damaged by the fear that pushes those in need away. Give us, your people, the church, a desire to grow and to be a healing presence in society and the lives of those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling or suffering in any way. We ask that you would bring healing and hope to those who are in need of, of your presence. We remember Dick and Marge Bradley. We remember Doris Brown, Rob Button, Linda Fleming, Cynthia Green, Vera Green, Amy Gustafson, Arlene Hiller, Carl Hoffman, Helen Jones, Ida Manuel Stovall, Katie Meyer, Angie Reichenberg, Barbara Romer, Donald Rusar, Juan Salinas, Mary Lou Schnitzer, Charles Sieberg, Bill Schneider, Diane Tallman, Kathy Tank, Ruby Williams, Steve Young, and others that we name before you who are in need of your healing presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment to share God's peace with one another. From a distance. With masks. You may be seated. We'll continue with our morning's offering, and we uh, thank all who are supporting our ministry here in the sanctuary and at home uh, that are tuning in by a um, live stream. A few weeks ago, we had a, a glitch, and the audio messed up, and I got a sense of how many people are watching us at home, because my goodness, <laughs> did I hear from some people about that. Um, so we're hopeful that um, things continue to go well. Um, we thank you for blessing us with your support.
Please rise. Be fruitful, Lord, fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest of the seeds that we sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the bread we offer now. Praise to our presence. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O, Holy, o Holy, Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death and, as he had promised, poured out your Holy Spirit of life and love and power to the chosen disciples and all believers. At this the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and forever. May be seated. Um, just a brief word of inst instruction until, because there may be some who have not been here. Um, we distribute communion in these uh, small self-contained uh, vessels. One side has the bread, the other the wine or grape juice. If you prefer that, please let me know. I'll distribute them down the front center, in the front center, uh, wearing a glove and a mask. Uh, please uh, maintain social distancing as you come down the aisle. All is prepared, come forward as you're ready.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord and sing his praise while everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shout of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. Remember Laura Downey and Scott are out there showing Bibles. We encourage you to become involved in this kind of ongoing Bible study um, and we'll turn you loose to be God's servants in the world. Our closing hymn, Let All Things Now Living. Thank you again for joining us in worship today. Mm -hmm.